one. What's up, TMFers? Uh, Happy New Year. Um, still rocking the uh, no facial hair and have an addition to the wardrobe. A little bit late, but shout out to Crying Jordan. <laughs> I wanted to get it for Christmas, but got it for the New Year. Anyway, this video is going to be all about um, what you should leave behind in terms of fitness and training and nutrition in leave it in 2016 because 2017 is a whole new year, a whole new opportunity. And there's a few big, big, big things that a lot of people aren't thinking of at all when it comes to training and nutrition. Um, and the first one is leave behind all the cookie cutter nonsense, all the programs that you see um, re recommending you do all the same stuff as everybody else to get the same results. Not respecting your individual physiology and psychology are two major, major, major components of your program if you want it to be sustainable at all. You could hop online, you could find a program that somebody else is doing or open a Flex magazine and, and see what every major bodybuilder is doing uh, and try and copy that. But newsflash, you are not an IFBB professional. You are not a uh, fitness model yet. You are not that person that is recommending that program to you. You are going to respond so, so, so differently to that program than they would be based on your context. So first thing to leave behind in 2016 is cookie cutter programs and not respecting your physiology. That comes with, number two, not knowing your training status. So training status is very, very important. And people might think it's as easy as, oh, I've been training for X amount of time and have X amount of muscle. Therefore, I'm a beginner. I'm an intermediate. I'm an advanced. I'm elite. There's a lot of considerations that go into that as well, and it's not quite that simple. Um, knowing your training status is going to dictate a lot about how much volume you could handle, what you should be eating day to day, how you should cycle your calories, all of these things, and a lot more. So you need to know your training status before moving forward with a program. Another aspect, number three, not respecting your circadian rhythm, and I'm sure or almost sure that you may have heard this concept uh, tossed around in the media lately. And what is your circadian rhythm? Well, it's your biological clock. And there are certain time points on your biological clock that your body wants to keep consistent. One of the most important things, if not the most important thing, is your sleep cycle. And not respecting your body's wants and needs when it comes to when you should be falling asleep, how long you're sleeping, your sleep quality, even when you're waking, and that spills over into the next day. How consistently are you eating your meals? At what times? When are you training? At what times? All of these things matter for your progress. If you nail these the correct way, your progress will be streamlined. And basically, as I keep saying, when you know what to do, it's only a matter of time. The flaw here is not knowing what to do in terms of your circadian rhythm. Again, huge implications, and people need to start being aware of this starting now. Um, we have about 12 hours till 2017. Uh, so you need to start wising up to, to this uh, premise here and respecting your body clock because your body clock is going to dictate a whole lot about you in specific. Um, this goes back to point number one, where a cookie cutter program is probably not going to cut it because not everyone sleeps, works, eats, trains at the same time. Okay. Number four, I think, collecting data about yourself. If you're serious about a physique change, which if you're watching this or you consume my content, that's your niche. That's what you want to do. Um, you need to know how your body responds to your given program. You need to be very diligent with taking data, such as what you eat. Uh, your circadian rhythm factors, how much you're sleeping, your quality of sleep, your training, your progressive overload, all of this. You need to know how your body is um, responding to these variables that you're changing over time. A lot of people don't do this. They fly blind. They hop on a program uh, with convenient numbers, you know, five by five, three by three. And, oh, uh, I could just add weight to the bar every single time. And it doesn't quite work like that. Work like that. You have a different recovery capacity. You have a different training frequency. 
if you're respecting your training status, um, you will have a different level of volume, intensity, frequency, all of that, that you need to abide by to ensure maximal progress. It's not as simple as just getting in the gym and doing your work. That's a great mindset to have, but you need to know what to do when you're there. You need to know what to do in the kitchen. You need to know what to do when you go shopping. Um, you need to know your program in and out and collect the data in response to your program in order for you to continue to progress. Number five, not relying on the right sources of information. And I'm not trying to call out anyone in specific here. A lot of people who give fitness and nutrition information um, have the right idea in mind and have a good, have your best intentions at heart. It's just the application. This um, goes back to training status as well. Every different person is going to require a different program. So I would very, very, very highly be cautious of anyone who's saying, yeah, just do what I did or just do this or just, just anything. It's not a just this proposition. You require a lot of personal care if you want to make a physique change. If you want to know some of some good sources of information, I'm going to link to a page on my website in, um, in the description of this video. And those are very, very highly recommended sources of very good information. A few names off the top of my head, Menno Henselmans, uh, I would like to call him my mentor uh, for Bayesian bodybuilding, uh, 3D Muscle Journey, Lane Norton, Alan Aragon, Brett Contreras, Danny Lennon with Sigma Nutrition, all of these. This is a free plug party. This is where I get a lot of my information from, and it's all vetted, it's all evidence-based, and it all fosters a much better discussion instead of, oh, I think you should probably eat more carbs and eat more protein because, um, you know, uh, Phil Heath is doing it. And no disrespect to Phil Heath, but he is a professional bodybuilder on a whole different level than a lot of people who are who are looking for physique change uh, who aren't um, taking their vitamins, if I if I could uh, say that. Um, so there are there are a lot of considerations to make, and all of these sources that I just listed, and some more that you could find on that page. Take all of this into mind. Um, number six is a little bit more uh, philosophical, and it's not putting energy into what you love. Okay. Um, there's a difference between an unhealthy obsession and a healthy obsession, in my estimation. And whatever your healthy obsession is, whether uh, that's a creative outlet, whether you enjoy writing, whether you enjoy um, knitting, creating artwork, um, anything creative that involves an investment of your time, anything that you're willing to kind of stay up past your bedtime to do is where you should probably be putting all of your energy. Um, for me, it's coaching, it's helping other people, it's fitness, it's nutrition, it's all of that. And I am so invested in people who are invested in return. Okay. And that will allow me to deliver the best quality of my work. If I know that I'm getting that same energy on the other end, you need to be putting your energy into what you love. It sounds so cliche and so woo woo and, oh, well, that's not going to pay the bills. Well, Honestly, I believe you should find a way to make your hobby your profession and have that be a way to, quote unquote, pay the bills. Um, so that is the top six uh, things that you definitely need to leave in 2016. I left a whole lot of things out uh, because I don't want to have this go much longer. But if you want a plan that accounts for all of this and much, much, much more, and you are ready to make an actual change, please reach out to me, message me on Facebook, slide in the DMs, email me, call me, text me if you have my number. Uh, I want to help you improve if you're ready to improve. And I know all of these parameters. And like I said, if you know what to do, success is only a matter of time. I want you to really believe that. I want you to put your energy into what you love. And one of those things that you should love is you. And again, that sounds cliche, but if you ever notice, most cliches are true. So 2017, fresh start. You have this opportunity to invest in yourself, to believe in yourself, to create the you that you want to be. And so use this opportunity wisely. And if you want something that accommodates for all of these variables, and like I said, much more over time to create a better you, please reach out to me. I want to make you better. And it's going to help me make, help me make myself better in the long term. So happy new year. Um, 
And here's to um, making 2017 your best year, man. Um, we only got a limited time on this earth. So uh, make use of it and no better time to bottle up that energy and use it than the new year. Talk soon.